Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying your Wednesday and today we are going to learn the functions in Spark, SQL and data frame. If you have realized I'm actually running the uh, the same same pattern with Spark SQL and Spark Data Frame. Uh, in these days, one of the advice that more tools you have in your in your belt, uh, it's going to actually add more value into into your profile. And while we are learning the SQL, so you're going to see how we can re use or you know we slightly a uh, change we can re-implement these these skills on on this part and like i mentioned spark is one of the one of the major language which is dealing with uh with the with the big data set at the moment and especially the way uh, it uh, runs the distributed workload across different nodes in the cluster nobody is matching it so it's it's uh we're amazingly, you know, uh, um, faster than than all other other competitor languages in the in the market, and more and more adoption is happening with with Spark. So, which obviously giving a clear edge towards towards Spark, and especially once you start entering into into the data engineering field in the in the industry, that's something that you need to be aware, or you have some knowledge or experience of, because you know you're gonna work later or sooner on. on on, on the big data, data sets because that's one of the requirement of big in, uh, data engineering or data engineering uh, jobs at the moment in the in the market so that that's why it's, it's good to actually see the similar thing how you are dealing with your structured data within sql the same way how you can manipulate if suddenly you have the floodgates open and you have for example terabytes of data coming towards you how you're going to process that that data and trust me uh, with spark and obviously we are using data bricks with data bricks uh it's it's amazing the way it is handling uh the terabytes and even petabytes of workload they're simply amazing later on down the track we, we're going to discuss the the synapse which is uh obviously microsoft version of uh, you know, of uh, handling the big data the set load uh, and the way Microsoft has built uh, especially the the built-in uh, 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 the built-in uh, uh, synapse uh, a pool uh, or built-in pool the normally called built-in pool within the synapse environment that that's amazing like you can run your queries seamlessly and it's all based on the SQL and trans uh, transactional SQL uh, syntax but underneath there is a translation layer which is converting your your queries into into the into the required language and that run on the massive parallel processing architecture where they have all these nodes which is taking your code and you know optimizing it and running it so that that there's something uh, amazing which is already in the market and used used by many many enterprises and obviously uh, we are not talking about streaming and and machine learning at this stage because I want to go step by step. But once we finish the SQL part, we're gonna see the further capabilities of of Spark and how it can you know uh, handle some of the most complex uh, 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 analytical uh, uh, scenarios or, or or problem. So by saying it, I think enough uh, uh, introduction to to Spark again. Let's jump into our presentation and then we'll jump in to our uh, demo environment and we're going to run Spark today. Cool. So what we're going to do is like uh, with SQL on, on SQL Server, uh, we are going to run today uh, some demo where we're going to actually see how we can use expression using operators. For example, if you want to do the same concatenation operation where we want to join to string, uh, how we're going to actually run the queries against our data set and how we are going to apply different built-in functions. Because obviously, like I mentioned, uh, with Spark, the, the, uh, the charm means that we have two stack available like we can really work into into do different stack uh parallel like if you uh, are finding something more easy on on the data frame side you can go and you can use it uh, uh in the in the uh, data frame but if you feel not that thing i am more comfortable in in doing uh in in spark sql just convert it and uh into into a, a virtual data set and then you can you know you can run any kind of sql statement on it and once you are 
finish with, with the outcome or you're happy with the outcome, you can literally change it back into the data frame. So it, it's all amazingly uh, converting internally by, by, by Spark engine uh, uh, for, for, for you. Uh, obviously, like I mentioned previously, we have the math function, we have the string function, date and time function, all these function which we normally use to, to, you know, to handle different kind of data. And, you know, there are a lot of functions available to, to, uh, uh, to define, uh, uh, you know, to apply different sort of operation to, to change the values of these attributes. They are already available. All you need to actually learn how to use them. I think with Spark, one of the major reason why people are leaving uh, or moving away uh, from, from Spark is more like the complexity of the syntax. And it's traditionally uh, unconventional for, for people who used to have, you know, very clean and flexible syntax with Spark is going to be a bit different, which I tell you, on, on the longer run is really good. You know, once you build this system, they are going to be very mature or, or, or I would say robust. Again, any kind of, you know, uh, 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 any kind of uh, error or, you know, any kind of change that shouldn't uh, align with the principle that you have built. So these are the uh, rules uh, that you be, uh, you get once you start working uh, within, within the, the Spark environment. And obviously we're gonna see where we can actually apply all these built-in functions and uh, expression in our statement uh, in, in this video. So this video is going to be split into two, two parts. One is going to be pure, uh, I would say, uh, SQL side on, on Spark. And the other one is going to be Scala side of Spark. So Scala is the language, like I mentioned before, Scala is the one that uh, has been used to, to uh, build Spark. So obviously that, that language has, has, the, has the true power of, you know, of uh, utilizing Spark technology. I, I know we have the PySpark, which is uh, highly adopted and uh, uh, welcomed by, by the industry, but I purposely sticking with, with a, a Scala because that is a bit uh, complex. Once you are comfortable with Scala, learning PySpark is not going to be an issue. It's more like, you know, just a small syntax change and you're gonna start driving the, the PySpark very quickly. So by saying it, let's jump to our lab environment. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do today, first we're gonna do the SQL Spark. All right, so our demo environment is ready and you can see the Spark notebook is there. And if you remember in, in my last video, I have actually loaded this data set into, into, uh, into my uh, Spark, uh, uh, Spark database uh, on, on the file system. Uh, at the moment, just uh, uh, remember that we have a file storage location available as part of our cluster, as, a, as part of our free cluster that uh, uh, Databricks is, is providing. Us. Uh, why I'm using Databricks, we can use EMR, we can spin up everything, but you know, Databricks is providing the cloud community edition of Spark and it gives you enough resources to, you know, to, to run all these kind of uh, demo or I would say uh, uh, POC uh, workload to check whether the, 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 the technology is going to uh, address your, your requirement, right? So that, that's why, and it, it's, it's amazing the way uh, uh, Databricks has been build uh, that literally with, with very minor configuration uh, effort, you can spin up your, your uh, uh, big data or any kind of data uh, workload or, you know, very quickly and you can start building the, the capabilities uh, using the using the Spark uh, stack. And obviously it is fully integrated with, with the data lake. So you can build the data lakes, you can dump the data there and you can start curing it, right? We're going to see a competitor product. Don't forget my Microsoft have Synapse in Azure, which is uh, a competitor product in the market for, for data break. So we, at some stage, we're gonna compare both and I leave the choice with you. Whatever uh, uh, works better for you, please uh, feel free to adopt it because at the end, both are using Spark underneath and both are uh, providing the, the, the similar capabilities uh, to, uh, to your organization and to yourself. Now, 
the very first thing that what uh, we normally do whenever we spin up the, the 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 notebook this notebook is more like you know a jupyter notebook that has been uh, adapted uh, based on the databricks environment and it provides you three different languages uh, you uh, sorry four uh, i always forget r uh, so we have python we have scala like I mentioned, Scala is the language that has been used to build uh, Spark. We have SQL, and that is the SQL NC, which is the standard SQL plus some enhancement that has been done by the community and, and the people who are working on, on the Spark SQL. And last but not the least, our language. Uh, by the way, we have Java available as well, but I believe Java is not included in the uh, in the uh, in the databricks stack, but you can also use Java. If you have a Java skill, you can utilize those, those skills uh, uh, in the in the in the Spark environments. But today we're gonna do what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna use SQL, right? Because that's the SQL uh, demo. Uh, and you can see, and I, uh, if you remember last time I mentioned, uh, don't be afraid of the syntax, this org.apache.spark, that's nothing but more like, you know, management of the libraries, which is typical a part of, uh, you know, uh, managing big codes in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, 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 nicely uh, managed uh, formats where we put the packages within the packages and then you know it's easy for us to track the the functionality once we release those 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 packages into into the market or you know uh, 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 towards our our users so like i mentioned we have in this part we have sql uh, package and it has all its uh, classes and and the function and then within the SQL, like I mentioned, because it itself is a package, we have another one which is called types. And type is more like, you know, uh, provide you the capabilities of all kinds of data types that you want to use. And these are the type data uh, types, which are strongly uh, type data uh, types. And what strongly type data, ignore it, just uh, remember it provides you to define, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the data type of your, uh, of your columns, right? Now, what that key is, you know, if I just provide types uh, in, in here, that means it will, uh, I have another syntax, right, which I actually used it last time. If we, after the, the, the last level, if we put dot and underscore, that means it will include all the all the uh, 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 underneath functionality up to this level right so function dot underscore means it's going to actually include all the functions so you don't need to provide it a reference now if i want to make sure that i put a bit stronger uh, uh, code rules on on my on my code what i'm going to do i'm just going to actually define a prefix uh, that uh, is going to be a label that is going to be used to call any any function from that library. So, for example, if I put function uh, equal uh, greater than sign and then the the label name, wherever I want to use the the uh, method or you know any any even class reference of the the functions package, I need to first you know uh, uh, put the label first and then dot and then the the function and we're gonna see it. similar way we have actually defined a label for our types uh, which will actually help us to access our our uh, I would say uh, methods from from uh, from these labels. This will just, you know, uh, clean our code and it's a good practice, like, you know, uh, uh, because if someone is reading, they know that, okay, that that uh, uh, label is referring to the functions of the SQL, so they can trace it back if they want to, you know, work on your, uh, on your notebook and they want to enhance your notebook. So it's a very good practice. They can easily, easily, you know, uh, trace back without asking you. I'm going to do, I'm just going to comment. So uh, today I'm going to uh, import SQL, SQL types and SQL function. And no error, like I mentioned, whenever you had uh, error, it shows normally on the top uh, right side and you're gonna see the description of the error as in the output area of, of, your, of your cell. Now, the file location, we are defining some variables, like I mentioned, and while it's used, it's more like a syntax while it's used to define any kind of variable uh, within, within the, within the uh, Spark environment or Scala uh, environment. 
And then that, that's the most important one where we are going to now read uh, our data file, uh, uh, wherever it is sitting. We have already defined the path. We have a file store and we have a table. Uh, by the way, uh, all the all the clusters, they have the, the uh, Linux or Unix uh, 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 based uh, uh, operating system. And it use all the bash uh, uh, framework to, to handle all the communication. At some stage, we're gonna see the, the utility that will help you to you know, control up to some extent uh, the, the file movement and you know, or, or the, 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 the storage area or some part of the functionality of, of your own cluster uh, in, in the cloud environment. Obviously you cannot control completely uh, because the, 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 uh, the whole infrastructure is managed by Databricks, but it will still provide you some capability where you can go and you, uh, you can you know you can investigate at the at the low level and see whether you can uh, uh, see the files and you know uh, just basic operation we will see uh, in in the corresponding video so i'm not going to explain these just remember that we are uh, reading a file, we are not uh, uh, assigning data types automatically uh, because we are putting infer under source schema as false. Uh, header is going to be in our first row and our delimiter is going to be comma. And we just need to call the load command because that will trigger the operation and it will load the uh, the file in the, in the data frame. Right at this stage, I'm just loading a small file. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually at some stage, I'm gonna uh, uh, load a very heavy file with I would say a couple of hundred millions of record, and then we will see how it works uh, within within the, the the Spark environment. And you will see that the way Spark process the environment is it's amazing because you know you are not running on one machine; you are running on a cluster that can have multiple machines. And you know the the Spark is uh, uh, execution manager is di distributing the, the the load to the executor node, and then you know collecting the results back and and presenting it to you. Besides that, we have a couple of additional optimization techniques that we're going to see later. So let me, with this description, let me load the data. So you have seen within uh, some second, it has loaded and even it's showing you the, 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 the time that it took 1.6 seconds to, to load the whole data set. And Please keep in mind, I'm using the free cluster, so uh, the um, the performance is not in its full capacity. Imagine if I have the register cluster, I have purchased the the capability for data uh, from Databricks. It's going to be a very different story from the performance perspective. Now, like I mentioned. Uh, once you get your data into your data frame, all you need to do, because if you are a SQL person, you want to, to uh, uh, manipulate or, you know, you want to run the, the queries on, on, uh, on uh, using the SQL language, it's very simple. You just need to transform your output into, into a virtual view uh, that will, you know, provide you the, the data set into the tabular format. And you can run any kind of, you know, SQL statement on, 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 on that data set. And obviously the command is that to create or replace local temporary view. Uh, by the way, if that local temporary view is only going to be available for your notebook, but if you want to use global, uh, like if you want to use across multiple notebooks, then you can define global uh, temporary views as well. We're going to see later on if we can define global views and then we can use it into, into different uh, notebook. Let me run this statement and I just uh, gave the name uh, vw underscore person. This more like a convention i put bw underscore just to to show that uh, that uh, it's going to be a view not a table because table and view both are the different uh, thing then as a first step i'm just going to do a sense check of my data i'm just going to run the query and you, if you remember normally in sql we run top uh, 100 star and the only difference here it's going to be a syntax uh, which is a bit different instead of top 100 we just put limit and then we define the the, the limit that how many records the we need to return uh, back from 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 our uh, our uh, uh, database so you can see our uh, table of view uh, you can see we are limiting to 100 so we have uh, got 100 record let me just quickly scroll down to just show you Oh, by the way, showing all hundred rows in, in, in here, right? So if I just replace it to two, 
you're gonna see that I'm going to get the now 200 records uh, out of out of my uh, out of uh, my how many records? I think it's over thousand records which are sitting there. Now, the next thing, obviously, we are now going to discuss the the function first. How we are going to you know apply the functions and like I mentioned uh, previously with with the uh, with the SQL Server, we have the built-in function that has been built for us to to uh, to use uh, for for the functionality. But we also get the capabilities to build these function if the capability is not there, right? So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the existing function, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually put that uh, reference in the in the uh, in the link of this video where you can you know where you can go and you can uh, get the the SQL function reference, and then that's a very good reference uh, you can use because it will provide you all the capabilities. Uh, to to call this function and even it will show you all the all the all the syntax. So if I just hit in in here, so we have uh, in here as well. Let me quickly. I think yeah. So you can see all the SQL API. Uh, function they are nicely documented and and available uh, in here i'm just gonna uh, put that link in in the video don't worry about that uh, uh, so you can you know you can or bookmark that link whenever you want to see any uh, you want to build any functionality uh, cross check in in here uh, it includes all the all the functions right and i'm gonna uh, uh, shortly show you how you can test the capability and then bring that function into into your actual code right but that that's the source which you can use to to uh, to build the build the functionality all right so coming back to and we're going to do the same exercise we're going to build the full name of the person because we know that we have the uh, we have the uh, the name sitting in chunks and we can see in here we have first name we have middle name and we have last name and then we have a problem that we have the uh, null in the in the middle name uh, which is uh, obviously uh, uh, in, uh, impacting our um, uh, full name outcome so what i'm going to do let me just take out this statement for a while and I'm going to just put middle name, right? So you can see the syntax is pretty much same. Like I'm not going to, and let me just, you know, just uh, put that for a while into, into comments and let me run it. Now, like I mentioned, uh, keep in mind guys, we are working with big, big data sets, right? So it's not like we are talking about something which is limited or for example on the on the disk space we have unlimited space on 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 the cloud where we can store all our data and then we can you know load them into into these uh, uh, a highly highly optimized data frame and we can literally query them through through our sql which is i would say a big game changer in the industry and an amazing thing to to you know to to work with and that's one of the core skills that you are going to be interviewed in in, in your data data engineering uh, interviews. So now we can see we have uh, Ken Che Sanchez, we have Terry Lee Duffy, but then the problem we have Roberto Null Tem uh, Brulo. Uh, the problem in here, uh, that shouldn't be, uh, that null shouldn't be there because that is not conveying any proper meaning to the business, right? Because we know that that is null and the, now you can see where sometimes null give us the problem. So the good news, we have the function replace that can, you know, replace the value uh, with the value uh, that you would like to. So I would say that wherever we have the uh, the null, uh, we, we need to, we need to, uh, uh, provide uh, we need to replace it with uh, uh, with empty one one thing i want to show you later that why i'm not using is null
right so now we can see that that has gone we are not getting any any problem where we you know we uh, we have that null so that that that's good that we have fixed it now what i'm going to show you that for example if i just want to see those record where the middle name is null let me run that and you can see query is return, uh, uh, not returning anything okay how about if we use equal no no result and there is a reason because you know while it was loading the data it instead of you know uh, considering uh, turning it to null it turned it as a as a string value uh, of of null so that happened many times that you know when you load the data sometime uh, the value which is coming as 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 null it will convert into you know into uh, some particular textual value then that you need to to deal uh, with with care right because now it, uh, we know that it is null but it is not actually uh, behaving as a proper null and now i'm going to show you how you can get these values what i'm going to do i'm just going to put it in the brackets and now if we run it we will get the outcome so now you can understand that the Spark engine it is considering it the Spark SQL is considering it as a as a textual null value which is way different than than the the, the null value that that's why we are not using uh, is null operation okay so I think we are good now we are going to see right in here uh, you know what I can do let me just separate it out actually I don't want to make it complicated. I'm just going to take out these two and perfect. So we, we have uh, uh, all these rows which are returning and we have a cap of 1000 rows on, on our result sets. So it will normally return always the first thousand. Uh, now we are going to filter the data. So we run the uh, the the uh, the sql with the with the building function we have seen how we apply and the, that syntax is pretty simple you know i'm just gonna show you how if you are not aware of the syntax don't worry about the sql syntax you always need to in your analysis while you are building the uh, building your queries or your script focus on the logic if you are able to build the right logic syntax you always read from from the documentation and after some practice you're going to be expert of the syntax right so learning the syntax is the most uh, obvious thing that's going to happen so always focus on 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 the uh, on the uh, on the uh, technology or always on uh, on the analysis part or you know logical part how you're going to approach the problem how you're going to actually build the solution so let me quickly show you in here the good thing with this documentation it has the it has the searching capabilities because you can see the documentation is quite long right so you are not going to waste time you know 10 15 20 minutes just by scrolling top to bottom and bottom to top right although it has the the list in here but still it's not very efficient in terms of you know scrolling so let's see yeah i can see concat in, in here so you can see the beauty is it provides you the, 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 the command as well as the example. So you can see the syntax. It will show you that it returns the concatenation of the column. And you can see you have the Slack concat SQL. What I'm going to do before I use into, into, my, uh, into my command, I'm going to actually try this command uh, and check whether it is giving the right functionality to me. So for example, I'm just going to put it in, in, in here and I'm just going to Okay, let's see. Uh, by the way, why I'm actually putting the, the SQL uh, tag because the, the default language of the notebook is Scala. Uh, so that's why wherever I want to use the SQL, SQL I need to just, you know, uh, mention the, 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 the uh, tag or, or prefix for our compiler. So it uh, understand that, okay, it's going to, to compile the cell using that particular language. Now let me run it. 
Excellent. So you can see it is compiling it. Uh, sorry, it is concatenating these two strings. So that that's going to help me to to generate the full name. So I know I all I need to provide my column names uh, into into this uh, this function, and it will concatenate. By the way, some languages are strict with single quotes and and double quotes. Uh, apparently, with with uh, SQL uh, Spark, it's not uh, uh, giving us big trouble while we are uh, using these code interchangeably. So that that there's another good thing so now we have tested it uh, uh that, that's why actually i included in the in the in the main uh in the main uh, uh sql statement so that that's how like if i uh, if you remember i mentioned how you're going to test the functionality and then use it we normally use it in the way that has been uh, mentioned in the document we looked at the output if that output looks similar to what we are trying to achieve then we will just you know re uh, reuse that that function from from the library hope that makes sense so let me just you know uh yeah i want to delete this command i don't need it i just want to test it so i'm good with that now the next step, obviously, uh, which is the biggest one, is how we're going to filter the data, how we are going to, because we are not going to return all the data all the time. Mm -hmm. We always need to apply filters to, you know, to refine the, the output for, for, for our, uh, for our um, uh, requirements or, or you know dashboarding or reporting so the syntax is very similar that we have seen in the in the in the sql server we use your clause and then obviously we have the the column name and and the condition so now you, we're gonna run it we're gonna see are we going to have any uh, all the all the uh, records where the where the middle name is null and let me run it you can see we have all those records where the name is textual version of null we are getting them right and we have all together 322 record right anyone i'm you know i can just run it if we don't if we return me all those records we are uh, we don't have uh, uh, the middle name as 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 uh, uh, we don't have them as uh, null right so you can see all the non null uh, middle name records they're going to actually come on 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 the screen and we can see uh, it's showing us we have 704 records where the middle name is present now that's a very simple right now again if you remember i show you the the logical operators and and how you combine uh conditions to to complicate uh, uh the, the the logic and normally like i mentioned there's a full discussion you can actually refer to to the previous video to to uh, to learn that we always have these rules coming from the business to help us to you know to develop this logic into into our our notebooks or scripts so for example if you want to see those middle name where we have middle name present and they have selected the email promotion so they uh, did not exclude themselves from from the email promotion and obviously if you remember we selected the the email promotion code as well so let me run it and you can see we have 155 uh, uh, customer. Their personal record, personal record is showing that they they have the full record available of of their name, uh, including the middle name, and they choose the email promotion, which is good. So how about if they didn't choose it? So you can see we have almost 400 uh, who didn't choose. So that means the rest are, uh, for example, irrelevant, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, we can see, do we have two? we do so if you actually add up all together you're gonna you're gonna see uh the 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 total number you know in here uh no i think that will be i don't want to do it now i just want to keep it to its own video all right so in the next one uh, we are going to format a bit more on on our uh, textual value and like i mentioned there are all strings functions which are available uh, date functions available and i think we have uh, you can see in on uh, all in, in here we have all kind of functionality available uh, yeah i think if i 
we'll go in, in here. Yeah, SQL reference. Please keep referring to that documentation on and uh, often because obviously uh, the, the, the Spark uh, developers, they are keep adding more and more functionality. And that's where the new version comes into the picture that where they, they uh, get the new challenges or the requirement from the from the community and then they build those capabilities and then once it's reached to a particular level they release the new version of of the api right so you can see we have built-in function and we have data types. so that, that, that's a very good reference point for us if we just want to you know to learn learn the 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 syntax of 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 the spark sql And I can see we have all these functions mentioned in, in, in here in a very nice way, similar way, like we can see, we can go and we can, you know, uh, search or find these function uh, uh, based on our requirement and we can utilize them. Right, we have array function. Array function are very useful once we start, you know, utilizing the, the, the JSON data sets which are coming to, to us, or we are utilizing the machine learning uh, data sets, uh, feature set. That's where the array uh, comes into the picture and play a very important role. And, and I think in, in, in this uh, document, you're gonna see, we have the function categorized by, by their nature. So for example, these uh, above one the array and these are i do believe these are the date and time functions yeah these are the you can see the these are the date and time function so which is really good like you know uh, i can see uh, it has already been categorized you can even print it out and you can keep it as a reference uh, on your desk whenever you need it you know you can just put the sticky note on on the uh, starting pages wherever the 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 function category is starting and then later on if you need you can refer back to to your own personal documentation for any reference okay so what I did, uh, beside concaten uh, uh, concatenating the first, middle, and last name, I just changed the, the case of my uh, 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 first and last name because I want them to be displayed in the upper case. For example, a requirement coming from the business. Mm -hmm. So you can see my first name and last name, they are all coming into, into upper case. So that's how you can, you know, uh, you can, uh, change or transform your data in the in the column name once you are once you uh, are applying the uh, applying the built-in functions and obviously like i mentioned in the in the slide uh, the same way you can apply the mathematical or, or date time function so like i mentioned uh, we have all most of the mathematical functions are available and these functions really help you once you know you want to build your own functions uh, and if they have some mathematical capability that you want to uh, use so always use these because they are highly optimized and they can you know they can uh, uh, run on on your data uh, and generate the outcome very quickly so absolute, like I mentioned, and let me just, you know, what I'm going to do, yeah. So you can see we are returning the the the, uh, uh, the positive value. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to show you something and you can see the, the power of, of so for example, 190 plus five. Look how quickly, you know, 0 0.01 second. And if I, you know, this, I'm just going to do 197.89 plus. So you can see such a big value it has calculated within, you know, within a very small time that it took to actually calculate the, the, the. so function uh, power wise, it's, it's really amazing the, the way we have got this cluster. Now another example where we are uh, calculating the square root, square, and 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 power function. Now here this is funny. Uh, we don't have the square function available, but that that's why I'm actually building the the capability by myself. Obviously we have the power function, and I can convert the power function into into square capabilities. How I'm gonna do it? Let me just show you. Both 
last two outputs gonna return me the same thing. So you can see we can utilize, but you know, like in other languages, we have a dedicated square function that is not available. So you're gonna see these kind of differences within, within the languages although they are following the same same rule but obviously uh, the technology differ uh, between uh, uh, different vendors and now we are handling one of the one of the uh, uh, most important data type which we deal a lot which is the obviously date and time and uh, uh, we know that our modified date is a is a textual value once it's read it can uh, read as a text now we are going to convert it into into the into the uh, 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 date type and i'm just going to show you okay so now you can see we have and i think it would be better if i can show you the original column as well so you can see the difference So that, that's the original column, but now you can see we, we once we convert into to timestamp, it is coming as as mm, 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 as a, a timestamp value. I can apply all the data from here. For, for example, I want to see the I want to see the year. Let's see. So you can see I can apply. So I can apply all these kind of date function which are available in the API and that will give me uh, all the, the built-in functionalities which I can reuse to, to address the requirement uh, coming uh, from, the, from the date perspective. Uh, and we have a similar syntax that that's the great thing in, in Spark SQL. You know, in SQL Server, we use cast and that's one of the reason I encourage you to use cast instead of convert because cast syntax is simple to implement and simple to use. Like you just need to mention the column name as and the, the target type. So that will convert that uh, column name into, into the target data type. The similar way, we have a similar syntax available. So you can see I'm converting the, the modified date, which I have actually done it separately. Now I'm using it uh, cost function to, to, to convert it into, into the timestamp. So let me run it and you can see in, in, in here as well. And if you remember that value, what we are going to do, we are going to convert our email promotion as a string and we are going to, to uh, uh, attach it or concat concatenate it with the uh, promotion type. And we are going to call it email promotion description because you remember most of the time business don't understand the, uh, the course, so they need some description. So they provide the rule based on these rules. We provide them the, uh, uh, the, the dis description of, of that column. Uh, one thing I want to show you in here, which is interesting. Uh, if you remember in SQL environment, we use this syntax. We just put plus sign and we see the concatenation operation between string. And then that's where sparse SQL is different. You're gonna see the outcome. It tried to concatenate, but you can see the, 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 uh, the output is coming as null. And that is a genuine null value, right? So you can see that that has been uh, created as null. And how I know that that is uh, a genuine null value, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use that expression. Clause, and I'm going to say it is not null. All right, so let's see what I'm going to get. We are not getting any results, right? Because all of the values in, in this particular column uh, has been uh, returned to us as null. By the way, that shows you, you can actually apply the expression or call your function uh, in, the, in the where clause as well beside, you know, in, in your select statement. And if I just change it to null, you're gonna see, we're gonna have all these records coming uh, on our screen. So that, that's how we apply. And by the way, we apply it uh, the is operator uh, in, in SQL. And you can see the standard is again there. If you remember, like I mentioned, whenever you are going to treat null, it's not going to be equality operator because equal is used to uh, uh, equally uh, uh, evaluate the equal values on both sides, right? But once you have null on one side, that means unknown. You don't know what the value is on on the on the uh, uh, other side of the of the uh, expression. So that's why you're always going to get the false results. 
So I think we are all good. I'm just going to comment it. Okay. So, however, if I just, you know, if I just use my normal uh, uh, concatenate function, I'm going to see that my uh, email promotion code has been concatenated with, with, the, with the value and I can see a proper description, right? And it is uh, uniformly applied to, to all the columns. And then last but not the least, if you want to, you know, like if you remember, if you want to apply the condition. So the great news is case statement is available. You can add your logic into, into, your, into your SQL uh, script, but I would like I mentioned uh, before, use it with the care, uh, power comes with, with responsibilities, right? If the case is available, but that doesn't mean that you are defining thousands of cases within, within your SQL uh, statement. It might uh, work, it might fulfill the purpose, but obviously Obviously, it's gonna drastically impact on the on the performance of the query when it goes and it you know it executes, especially with with the with the uh, terabytes of the data, right? And terabytes of the data is very common within within the Spark, right? Just uh, keep in mind that we are literally talking big data sets where we have massive you know uh, records, uh, maybe hundred millions or maybe billions of records, and we are processing them. We need to be mindful of of the data volume. Uh, so the syntax is very similar. We define the case statement, and then what we are going to do, we are just going to put a condition that if the email promotion value is zero, then we are going to mention in the description that uh, person didn't select uh, the uh, the promotion. But if it is one, then email promotion has been selected, and if it is any other value, that means it's not applicable. So then that's the scenario, and now we are running it. And voila, we have the 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 outcome which with the with the right description based on the condition. Now that will help you to build any sort of condition or any sort of select statement uh, within within the uh, within the Spark SQL environment. Uh, the only thing uh, in here up to some uh, up to this extent, we are only dealing with with uh, one table. Uh, normally our data comes into into multiple tables so if you want to uh, use multiple tables what we're gonna do uh, in order to uh, understand it you're gonna wait for the the video which we're gonna actually where we're gonna discuss the join so I hope this video will be helpful and beneficial for for you so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.